Come on in, come on in, come on in. All geeks are welcome in this space. Let's learn together and seek his face. I'm Lem Philya, aka Bad Game Early, your host for this Sound Maiden podcast sponsored by LifePromotions.org. God Games and Geekery gives us an opportunity every month to chat about the crossroads of our passions and our faith. I can't wait to learn and discuss with you. Hey! We survived episode 66, and we are on episode 67. 67 episodes, you guys. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. We could go, you could literally go over a year if you listen once a week and just do the whole thing. It's great. I love it. I love it. Let's go. Oh, man. Hey, I want to say thank you to our sponsor, LifeFest.com. That's LifeFest, L-I-F-E-S-T dot com. Go check it out this summer, July 6th through the 9th in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Man, yo, Casting Crowns, Matthew West, Sidewalk Prophets, uh, Corey Asbury, Ben Fuller, and one of my personal favorites, freaking Toby Mac. Let's go! Oh, so excited. Hey, um... And I know you're probably listening. You might be listening to this as it comes out. It's Easter weekend. It's Holy Week, you guys. And um, you're probably thinking, why are you thinking about summer already? Because that's what we do. It's what we do. We prep. We plan. Guys, uh, I'm so excited because the G3 lair is going to be in full effect. We're having the G3 arcade. All right. It's coming back. We're trying to do something bigger and better. Um, we are, we were, I, we may be doing a workshop. I'm not sure, but we're definitely doing daily geeky devos. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Daily devos join us in the mornings. Um, and, and, oh, the plan is to do a live podcast recording. So I am going to need all of you there so you can make some noise and make it happen, make it work. I'm so excited for that. Uh, July 6th through the 9th, Oshkosh, Wisconsin, Life Fest, party with a purpose, a party with a purpose. And that purpose is to show and remind and fellowship when the community that shows Jesus' love to the world. Visit lifefest.com. Go do the thing. Hey, so what have I been up to this month, this past month, these past 30-ish days. Well, I have been playing video games. Um, I, that's a shocker for some of you, I know. Uh, but uh, I've been playing Anthem. Um, yeah, I, you, yeah, don't rewind. You heard it right. I've been playing Anthem um, and loving it. Absolutely tearing it up and loving it, you guys. I don't know. I slept on it. I did. I slept on it. But, man, I'm having so much fun. And there, there are people that are actively playing it. I, every time I log in, it takes me a little bit to get in a lobby, but there are people actively playing it. I'm a level like eight. I paired up with two level 30s and they just carried me. It was so awesome. Um, I'm also playing Hogwarts Legacy. I am about 60 hours into that and still not done with it. I, there are, I think there are like four trials, if I remember correctly, just looking at some of the uh, big things that happened in the story. And um, I think... I think there are four trials, and I just finished the second one. I'm in winter, and I'm 60 hours in. I am loving this. I have, and here's the thing. Here's the kicker. For those that know me, I've done virtually no photography in it. No game photography in it, and I'm 60 hours in. That's how big this game is. Um, what else am I playing? Oh, yes. Um, I'm playing, I played some Starlink. Um, I'll talk about that in just a little bit. Um, I played, of course I played Fortnite, um, not as much as I was in the battle Royale, but I am back into the, uh, the, uh, save the world mode. I got my friend Ed Placencia. You guys remember Ed from, uh, last month's podcast? Well, he's now playing Fortnite almost every day. This guy was not a Fortnite guy at all. Decided to give it a try and he is in love with it too. It's so great. Um, I am about level 86, I believe, right now. We still have a while to go uh, for the rest of the season. But I'm at level 86. 
Uh, I have all the skins. Now it's just variants of them that I'm going to be getting. And I think my skin count is up to 361 or 362 as of right now. So uh, in just a few skins, I can play as a different character every day of the year. I might be a little, it might be a challenge for me uh, to play every day, Fortnite every day and have a different uh, skin. Uh, might have to be a thing. Man. Um, what else? Oh yeah, on the on the God Games and Geekery channel on Twitch, that's twitch.tv slash God Games and Geekery, spell out the and. Um, uh, we're playing Midnight Suns on Wednesdays. We, uh, we, we cut Tuesday recently, but Wednesdays at 10.30 a.m. Uh, we're doing the crossroads. Uh, I'm playing Midnight Sun. So many different characters. So many different personalities. The the diversity in that game. Uh, races. Um, religious beliefs. Uh, lack thereof. Uh, all of all of the, the the diversity in that game that make up the team of heroes is just amazing. Um, I'm also. We're also playing every week. We, we try a different game on Thursday. Um, but we've been slipping back on the Fortnite just because it seems to be one of the most popular ones for our friends. Um, it's free. Students can join us. And I encourage all of you students that might be listening, or if you know any students, send them over to twitch.tv slash God Games and Geekery. Have them check us out. Um, yeah. But not, not much on that. Uh, doing more on Overwatch. I was going to try to make it to level 200 in Overwatch. But I am so close on Fortnite that it's it's always it, it's always a, a struggle to go. Which one do I really focus on? But I made it past level 80. I'm at like 175. So it's farther I've, that I've ever been for the Overwatch Battle Pass. And that new one starts, I believe, middle of April. Let's see. Um, what am I watching? I'm not watching a whole lot. Um, I watch some YouTube about programming um, and coding. Oh, the reason that I'm watching coding stuff on YouTube. I personally, Lem, Bad Gamer Elite, was accepted into the uh, creator, the, the Fortnite creators program. Um, so I am an official Fortnite, uh, creator. So it's so great. Uh, so if you want to have some maps to take photos of your Fortnite outfits and lockers, let me know. I'll, I'll get you some codes to get into those. Um, but yeah, I've been watching a lot of that. I've been watching, uh, a lot on the, uh, Unreal Editor for Fortnite. Um, I've been still bullet journaling. That right there is still a struggle for me, uh, working with my ADHD and the bullet journaling is uh, has been really tough. We did have our last quake for the season, which is a little bit of a bummer, but I got to meet so many of you and I'm so excited to see you, some of you at Life Fest. I know some of you guys are going to be there, um, but we... What I noticed when I was at Quake, and what I noticed, again, I'm, I'm looking at all the different uh, things that I, I, I play around in. My favorite games, um, and favorite way to game is doing diversity. And I mean that in diverse, like diversifying what I'm, what I'm gaming. Um, for instance, I started to categorize my days of my personal streams. Um, Mondays are Creative Mode Monday. Uh, Tuesdays are Ubi Tuesdays or Ubi Tuesdays, either way. Uh, Wednesday is Guild Wars Wednesday because I play Guild Wars 2. Uh, Thursday, it was uh, this again Thursday, as in I'm playing a game that came out a while ago, but I didn't really get into it, which is when I've been playing Anthem. Um, but now it's going to be, well, this is new Thursday because I have so many games I haven't played that I haven't even touched. Um, so we took a vote and it, we're changing up the Thursday. Uh, Friday is casual Friday and Saturday is uh, game talk free Saturday. Um, so yeah, I stream six days a week on my own personal channel as well. Uh, but man, 
this that that diversity and in in the video games uh, so like in hogwarts legacy the the difference of the wizards that i meet and everybody's trying to learn magic in the school but they're doing it for different reasons and 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 then in overwatch oh my goodness oh the diversity in overwatch not just in uh in character types but in the characters within those types ah <sighs> And then in Fortnite, uh, when I play Save the World, there's different classes of characters there, but they all work together. And I got to, well, actually you guys uh, got to meet one of our guests. That's right, I heard, you heard, I said one of our guests um, uh, a few months ago. Bryson, Bryson Magger, you got to meet him. So he said that it was okay. I, I asked him if he wanted to come back. He said, yeah, that's great, I would like to come back, but I'd like to bring a friend. And we want to talk with Bryson and Grayson about diversity in our faith. Guys, what does diversity mean when it comes to our faith? Let's go check it out. Hey, you guys, I promised you, you know I like to keep my promise, <laughs> not one, but two amazing musical artists that I met <laughs> in in Tennessee for Life Fest Music City. Yeah. You guys, Bryson and Grayson are here. Bryson's back How's and Grayson's going, here everybody? for the first time. Hello. Woo! How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> oh, how are you guys doing? We're good, good, man. We're good. Doing good. Living life. I wouldn't say we're living large, but you know, <laughs> uh, we're we're living it. Well, I yeah. mean, maybe large. We're able to travel back and forth to each other's houses. Yeah, we're we're large <laughs> enough. Hey, you know what? If you can make it to A and B, yeah. you're good to doing go. Good. <laughs> you're good doing to go. Good. You know, I, you guys were did a, did interviews with me and, and my my photo video crew uh, yeah. in Tennessee. And it was so cool. You guys are so good at just having a, a joint conversation with anyway. And I, I, I don't know if I expressed that enough, that my <laughs> thanks and appreciation for what you guys can do. Aww. Well, thank you. It's, Appreciate it. It's not a it's not a small thing. Yeah, well, that's the first time we ever had to do that. Right. So I'm going to what? <laughs> are you yeah. kidding me? Yeah, no. Well, I mean, no, we you all... have you've had your like interviews over the years, but yeah. like at least as a band, it yeah, was our as a first. Group. Like, yeah, thing. no, we, I don't think we'd ever been interviewed before. Yeah, oh I think my you just, goodness! You, you got a peek into what it's like with us any given day. Like if you if you stumbled upon us in a Waffle House at three a.m., which we <laughs> yeah, which we have frequently yeah, before. That's, that's what you're getting. Uh, <laughs> it's the exact same way. It's, it's a little less filtered, but that's yeah, what you're getting. Less filtered, <laughs> that's, that's what you're getting. A lot more sleepy, but. <laughs> All right, so guys, if you want to hear that conversation that I had with the whole band, um, you you gotta hit me up. Hit me up, badgameratlifepromotions.org, um, or in the comments, wherever. Make sure that you let me know because it was a great conversation. Uh, we, super fun. And if, you know what, even if one person says they wanna hear it, I'm putting it out there, I might email myself. Uh, <laughs> there you go, there you go. Is that good? Um, and what I noticed about your group um, is that there was a wide diversity in uh, in, in 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 race, a, wide, a, a diversity in um, interests, in uh, personalities, and you all seem to get along with that. You thrive. It looked like you thrive on it, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Tell, tell me a little bit about that as far as how that, why that works. Yeah, so we all started playing together um, loosely. My, myself and Nick, uh, our rhythm guitar player and our lead guitar player, uh, Johnny, uh, Nick Tomasello and Johnny Sawyer. Back in 2017, I was a freshman uh, going into my sophomore year of college. Um, and then Bryson came along in 2019. Yeah. 2019. And then uh, Terrence, our drummer, has been in the mix for a while. And then, um, Caleb came in 
probably 2019 as well. About about the same time, or a little after. It was right? after. A little, little after. But, um, but he I, he was doing like he, so. Caleb and I both were like filling guys at first. Uh, and I got I got a call because uh, it was like the fall beginning of a fall semester, and they had a uh, an event going on, and I was like, sure. I'd met Grayson like maybe three or four months before. Uh, we were both walking to the same building <laughs> and and uh, I was like I obviously knew who he was but I was just like trying to you know let him do his thing and he like slowed down and matched pace with me on the sidewalk he's like hey boss how's it going <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, so that, that was the first time I met him and yeah. then and then I got the call to play fill in on a gig and then the rest is just kind of history. We played a bunch that semester yeah. and we just hung out and really got along well. And then, um, you know, it was 2020 obviously was kind of a stutter step, but then we kind of just kept going and then uh, Blink and we played Life Fest and, uh, yeah. you know, the rest is history. Yeah, as they say. here we sit. Yeah. It's, it's, it's strange. I mean, I, I think the, the common denominator with, with between all of us is we've all played church music for a really, really, really long time. Mm -hmm. um, more or less, uh, you know, since the inception of us, you know, as as musicians and, and performers and vocalists and, and whatever. So there's there's that common thread amongst all of it. Um, but, you know, I had a band in second grade that sang solely Bee Gees music. Um, but I, so when we were doing Talladega Nights, you know, Adam, Adam McKay and Will Ferrell and all those cats would, would sing me Bee Gees songs. Um, uh, when I was two, I introduced myself as Grayson called Russell George Strait. You know, he's the, the king of country. So, so for me, like my my tastes are tastes are on both ends. Um, but but it, Bryson is too. I mean, really, it's a it's a pretty eclectic crew as far yeah. as all our musical tastes. Um, but I think you know that's what what makes it work for for me. Like that's that's what I want, and that's not out of out of just trying to check any kind of box i know that i'm limited to to you know what i'm physically capable of as yeah. an artist um and i definitely want to want to grow that um and i think we all do um and you know the really only way to do that is to, is to genuinely you know collaborate um but you have to find that with you know you have to find that with with people that you trust right um people that you love and i think that's I think that's the hardest part, um, really, is finding a crew that you that you really, really gel with, um, and that everybody kind of has the same, you know, streamlined goal of getting to this, you know, one particular piece or point or parcel. Um, but the nice thing is, there's eight million different, you know, uh, not necessarily opinions, but um, stylistically routes we can get there right um, and it's right. just trying to kind of figure out you know what we do best because me i'm i'm you know vocally it's very much um i, w I would probably say southern rock would would be the easiest thing i could i could pull off um but like i said i grew up singing bg stuff you yeah. know i can i can croon a little bit i i never really do that i never really flex that muscle but i can if i need to oh okay uh, all right hold on, hold on. He's, we, he's never heard me do that we're, we're gonna stop for a second <laughs> and i'm gonna need to give i mean i'm gonna need you to give me at least five seconds of some crooning oh man i, was gonna say, you've uh, nev I don't think you've, you've ever told me this no like i i'm i've been missing out on sinatra stuff this whole time five five I, seconds I used, to, I used to hold on let let uh let me think of what I'm going to do because I hadn't done it in a while. So okay. I don't embarrass myself. He's got to prepare. And, and I've, got <laughs> yeah. to, I've got to prepare myself. We, we for can't it. be too spontaneous. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, let, let me. <laughs> but let, let me I do. Speak I up. do want to take a step back for yeah. our for our listeners that are like, who is Lem talking to right now? <laughs> because we we know each other, right? We've gotten to know each other a little bit. Bryson and I. We I tell everybody the story of how I met Bryson. Aww. I said we were we were in. Like I had, we had just done a uh, uh, something at a far end of the the land in uh, for Life Fest Music City, right? Yeah. And it's a five minute walk from where we were to the tent I needed to go to. Yeah. Forty five minutes later, we made it there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds because. About right. Because we were just we were just having a great time, and so people have heard yeah. that. But let's go back. Who are you guys? What do you do? Why? <laughs> How do we know each other? Uh, well, I mean, I you know I have been playing music on and off um, for most of my life. I'm similar to Grayson in that I 
grew up in church and music. Um, my dad was the sound guy and my mom sang on the praise team. And uh, from the moment that I could, I was pretty much up there. Uh, I was, I, I can claim I was baby Jesus at one point. There you go. Uh, for, for one Christmas, there you are. one Christmas production, little, little My butterball Lord. me was sitting there. <laughs> yeah. And Roll uh, of a lifetime. That's right, that's right. Uh, and then uh, I was uh, a shepherd in the next Christmas one. And then I did that a bunch of Christmases and I did, uh, we were talking about this last night, uh, music camp growing up, and uh, it was these like, you know the old choir books? Yeah. They were like this thick and they were all, they all looked the same basically. Well, they did like children's musical productions too that were all like Christian themed and I uh, did a bunch of those growing up. That was like my, my high school theater uh, equivalent. Yeah. Uh, and then I went to school for music out at Lee and then met Grayson and then, um, I uh, started playing in like a bunch of bands. Um, I did music work while I was in school. And then uh, I did my own band and started putting out my own music. And so pretty much like 99% of my life revolves around music at this point. Mm. Um, and then, you know, like, like what we talked about last time, you know, I have interests in other things and, you know, enjoy other things a lot. Like I was a huge, actually, if Grayson, move your head for like two seconds, right back there. You can see that big poster. Yeah. That is like one of my proudest nerd uh, things in my life, which is um, a first edition Star Wars poster oh, that whoa. came God. from from uh, it's down here somewhere. My vinyl collections over here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it it is from the first draft soundtrack from the first movie. Oh, oh which wow! Was the first record that my dad bought with his money back in the you know right after it came out yeah. and so uh that poster is like not limited edition because you know like but it's rare reprint it and stuff but that is the original yeah well yeah. it's not ever been and there's like there's little bits of tape on it from where he had it up at one point when he was uh home from college that's like that and then this is um a clip from jumanji yeah Signed by Robin. No. Uh, oh, wow, I didn't know you had that. Yeah, Bro. That's, that's that's my other my other. That's fantastic. Um, Did I tell you about this right here? This is this is. Oh yeah. Star Wars: A New Hope. Uh, uh the the novelization signed by George Lucas. I, yeah. That's yeah. that's so dope. Yeah. Uh, that's so dope. A friend of the a friend of the community's mom sent it to me. That's so awesome. <laughs> so yeah. See, that's that's the benefit of like the the community thing i've just got all my my junk myself like i have my random nonsense collectibles like the tiki ninja turtle <laughs> and uh uh a dog from oliver and company yes uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. so, why should i worry <laughs> dude, it's the it's my favorite like slept on disney movie on oh the i will always preach the praises of of billy joel and huey lewis on that movie because oh, it's good. so good <laughs> um, but yeah that's pretty much me i'm like 99 percent music and then i get geeky about a bunch of other stuff and then and then our our accomplished thespian uh, <laughs> so grayson tell us tell us tell us about it because you know it's going to come up you yeah. kind of mentioned it earlier but let's start from the start you mentioned acting yeah. Yeah. How long has that been going on? And are you, is that uh, something you're like geeky, geeky, deep into? Yeah, you know, uh, it, it's weird. I, I grew up in it. So my, I started acting doing like local television commercials when I was six. Uh, and so I'm 24, about to be 25. Um, and then the first film I did was a NASCAR movie called Talladega Nights, um, which ended up doing doing really well. I played Will Ferrell's a NASCAR movie. That. Like we yeah, don't know. <laughs> and, uh, well, some people, some people aren't in NASCAR and, I, and I'm, I've, I've never watched a ton of it. I have, um, I've never watched NASCAR, yeah. and I love that movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, well, so, if you do watch NASCAR someday, just be ready for a lot of left turns. Yeah, yeah, a lot, <laughs> a lot, lots, lots of it. copious amounts of left turns. Um, but uh, yeah, so that that was the first film I did. Um, and then while we were working, I got hooked up uh, with a with an actor named uh, Michael Clark Duncan. He's a big guy from Green Mile, and um, I knew him as a uh, Balthazar on um, Scorpion King. 
and uh, he played Lucius, the pit crew chief in Talladega Nights. And when we were at the uh, at the premiere, he set me up with his manager, and that's how I was able to stay in the business. Mm. And so I've done twelve uh, films uh, as far as features, being a being a principal role in those, and about four other episodics. And I'm I'm looking a little unkept. Uh, right now, because Friday I will leave and go to Charlotte, start working on a on a TV show. Um, and so I'm doing right now two episodes of that. So so we'll see what happens. Can you talk about um, it? Can you say normally, what it is? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. I can't. All right. Just I, no, I have to ask. If I didn't ask, I would get the emails. Why didn't you ask? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Um, whenever whenever I book something, I always kind of let my let my hair out and go, um, yeah. just so that they've got kind of a canvas to work with. Um, like we smart. need it as greasy yeah. as possible. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, in 2009, I uh, I, I started work on a, a, a trilogy called Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Um, yes, sir. I played Frankly, who was the kind of a the the more or less like the the white Urkel is the easiest way for me to me to describe it. <laughs> people, glasses and all. And um, so we did three of those from I think it was 2009 to 2012, mm -hmm. um, and yeah. those those were, were really really well received. Um, and really, really grateful for those. Um, and the last, the last film I did was a World War II film uh, with Tom Hanks called Greyhound. And so we got nominated for an Oscar. We didn't win it. Um, that one, I had no hair at all. Everything, <laughs> everything was buzz. We did yeah. um, boot camp with the uh, with the Navy and Marines that was headed up by this guy named uh, Captain Dale Dye, seventy four year old, three time Purple Heart recipient. And this is where it ties into the geekery. Um, so I've always been like a like a history buff, World War II buff, Civil War, whatever. Yeah. Any kind of conflict, I love. And he, <laughs> he, yeah, I, lo I love learning about man, it. Man, I love it when mankind just wants to kill each other. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um, he, uh, he pioneered the uh, three time Purple Heart recipient Vietnam vet. He pioneered the concept of senior military advising for film. Mm. Um, mm. So he's done Platoon, Saving Private Ryan, oh, Band sure. of Brothers, The Pacific, uh, no. Thin Red Line. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Alexander the Great, born on the Fourth of July. Like he's done, he's done everything. Whoa. And I was, uh, I, I for Christmas, uh, the year before last, I told my mom I wanted, uh, or, or I told my folks I wanted a little the the three what uh, white, yellow, red like RCA plug yeah. to HDMI. Yeah. So that me and my my best friend Nathan from home, who like just had his first kid. We're all getting nostalgic. It was like, I'm going to go get my PlayStation 2. We're going to go back through our childhood. We're going to do Battlefront 2. We're going to do yes. Call of Duty Finest Hour, Big Red 1. Um, and yes. I chucked in Medal of Honor, old school Medal of Honor. Yeah. And yeah. I want to say it was the the, the, the Pacific yeah. one. Um, so uh, it might be it might be Rising Sun. I think, that's, I think that was what it's called. And I'm in a boat, you know, and the sergeant or whoever's in front of me in I recognized the voice <laughs> and I, I kind of like, it was weird. Like it was almost like my mom yelled at me for yeah. a minute. I was like, what is that? And I realized, I that, holy yeah. crap, that's captain die. Oh my God. Us out for two months. And you know, he ended up really spearheading. Um, uh, uh, well, like I said, he, he uh, spearheaded the, the concept for, uh, you know, senior military advising. Yeah. Um, but once saving private Ryan dropped, they're like, Hey, let's, you know, and I might be a little off on, on the history here, but he really headed that up for uh for the Medal of Honor franchise as far oh, as the World War II stuff's concerned. That's so awesome. I didn't even mean to make make that connection, but that was the coolest <laughs> thing in the world. I was like, oh my gosh, yeah, I'm full circle, baby. Out in real life and and you know in, in virtual game. space. <laughs> my, my captain died. Um, That's so, yeah, great. I, I did a I did a film uh right before that called Mother's Day, which was Gary Marshall's last film. Uh, he directed Happy Days, Mork and Mindy, mm -hmm. Laverne and Shirley, um, Pretty Woman. So he discovered Robin Williams and Julia Roberts. Um, it's a film <laughs> called, called called Mother's Day, um, and that's for some some geekery and some nostalgia if you're into you know uh, a lot of a lot of old school uh, yeah, comedy. Man. That's that's far more where my uh, geeky actorish stuff yeah. lies. I was raised by a bunch of old people, really a bunch of old women. My granddad's <laughs> the youngest of six. Um, oh wow! So I was kind of passed around between all of his. Uh, his siblings and uh so I, I pick up on a lot of sanford and son that was my yes. that was my ringtone yes. for years i uh, i travel uh and and play guitar for uh, uh an artist named guy penrod who sang for the gaithers for years mm. and um on, on the bus yes. it's like andy griffith rat race and i was like hold on we got to fix this and i i brought in my five 
or six, however many seasons of Sanford and Sons. Let's go. And like, that's, my kind of, that, that's my <laughs> contribution to, you know, the, the bus ride from here to, you know, Alba, Texas. Yes. Yeah, boom. Come on. But, uh, yeah. Oh, Ethan, oh, sorry. Ethan. Um, but, okay. Yes, sir. But, uh, uh yeah, so, so I've grown up doing film my whole life. Um, I started uh, singing kind of by myself in church when I was three. So that kind of came before the rest of it. Yeah. Um, I didn't mean to be an actor at all. Uh, Talladega Nights occurred because it was in the newspaper. Dad went fishing and me and mom were bored. Um, which is all <laughs> good uh, I, uh, Bryson's heard this half a million times. I got saved doing um, doing Talladega Nights uh, at Central oh. Church of God, Pastor oh, wow. Lauren Livingston, which is really wild because... We filmed Talladega Nights in Charlotte. Um, yeah. First film I ever did. And I'm going to Charlotte on Friday to start my first recurring role on a TV show. Um, so it's really sweet how that's, you know, um, that's yeah, come, come back that's around. Yeah, he's he's going back actually to go find. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm going back to like the, the hotel where we stayed <laughs> and, and you know, everything. Because, because again, like that was all through the eyes of a seven-year-old child who had yeah. no idea what was going on. Like, um, this hotel room's a lot smaller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hotel room's a smaller. Well, <laughs> I remember. Um, but sorry, that was that was a long way around saying, you know, hey everybody, my name is Grayson Russell. Uh, probably been in a few films <laughs> that, that you've seen at some point in time. Um, he but also, he doesn't yeah. sound as country always. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. Roles. Um, but uh, I also have a band uh, uh, called The Breaks with this guy um, and all the other fantastic individuals that I've mentioned. Um, yeah, and. Yeah, we'll do everything from uh, Life Fest was uh, almost an accident. Somebody backed out and they're like, hey, we've heard y'all play before. And now, granted, they, they were hearing us play you know, Leonard Skinner and, uh, and, you know, one well, Brian's songs. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, some of Brian's stuff, too. It was all Southern rock. So, obviously, like I said, we'd done Christian music our whole life and went to the Christian school. So, that was easy to, that was easy to you know, flip yes. over into. Yeah, we had, um, we got, we got plenty of Sunday sets on tap. Yeah. Dude. Oh, oh, <laughs> We need we need some Sunday morning stuff. We're like, listen, yeah. we got forty years worth of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, between us, it's funny though, like, cause, cause again, like, stylistically, everybody varies a ton. Terrence, our drummer, is is very much, uh, you know, he has the, like, I mean, really yeah. just hardcore gospel chops. He's got the yeah. he's got the fire of the yeah. Lord. In yeah, him. yeah, for, for sure. <laughs> and then Caleb, who plays bass for us, is is very much like the classical romanticism is yeah. his is his thing yeah. uh, so, so he ends up, he yes. ends up being like the theory yes uh, but what's interesting about caleb is so like he's one of the smartest guys that i know yeah. um i and like he and i used to talk shop because i i'm a year older than him but i ended up like tutoring in some of the classes that he was in at the time and his roommate is one of my best friends oh, so wow. we always like ended up linking up and yeah. then we end up playing in a band together and you know now we've become a lot closer but um he is a very talented, like classically trained player. Um, can play anything with strings at this point. I'm convinced. Yeah. <laughs> um, That's awesome. He's from he's from Papua New Guinea, and like is a missionary kid. And so like he's got this crazy story. And yeah. then to top it all off, he's like this amazingly talented classical player, yeah. and then ends up playing for a gospel artist. And like that was his bread and butter for a while. He played yeah. for Eddie James. Yeah, played for Eddie uh, James. Oh wow. And so like. You know, we have Terrence, who's straight up gospel, like it no holds barred. If you open, if you like roll down his car window at any given time, yeah. you're gonna hear shouts. Always going. bumping. <laughs> Ter Terrence, uh, me and Terrence, Terrence was my roommate for uh, for two years, and the only rule I had living with Terrence was like, hey, dude, no praise break music before <laughs> one o'clock, because <laughs> I would be laying in the dorm, and Terrence would, you know walk into the bathroom to get yeah. up in the morning and I might still be asleep. You know, I might have been up till three, four in the morning and Terrence is getting up at like eight and just starts and I mean like crank to eleven in the bathroom and like my whole bed's right in there. It's like hey, hey, what? Uh, Hello <laughs> We love him. Um, yeah. um I, I gotta then, tell course, you the the song I wake up to or the artist I wake up to every morning for the past wow. two months because my Echo Dot plays a playlist for me. And it's downstairs in my man cave versus me being upstairs and I can still hear it. <laughs> That's wow. how loud it is. I got some Kirk Franklin blast. There you go. Yes, sir. <laughs> there you go. Yes, sir. So I was a, I was a presenter at the Dove Awards in 2007. So Telling Nights came out in, in six. And um, 
we were presenting a group of the year. It was me and Rebecca St. James. Mm. And uh, I want to say Ca- Casting Crowns got it that year, yeah. which is really yeah. cool because that's who we ended up opening for at Life Fest uh, last year. Um, but Kirk Franklin, Mandisa, and Toby Mack had just done Lose My Soul. Let's um, go! And they, and they, portable sounds and they yeah, yeah, portable sounds had just dropped, and they yes. closed it out uh, with a with like a, a choir, like all rubbed out, coming yeah. down the aisles of the Grand Ole Opry. Yeah, it was wild. So that's my only that's my only Kirk Kirk Franklin story. <laughs> oh um, man, but, oh, uh, oh Kirk. But yeah, and then going going back to our to our band guys, uh, Nick Tomasello started out playing bass, and then he's kind of rolled over to playing rhythm guitar. Mm-hmm. He's a he's a metalhead at heart. Um, so that's a hard, to- hard, 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 hard <laughs> metalhead. So that, that switches everything up. And then uh, yeah. Johnny Sawyer, our lead guitarist, is really a, a catch-all. He kind of yeah. does. Everything. He does He does everything, um, which is, His, it, well, yeah, I don't even I don't even know how to describe it. Yeah, so like he, he's he's the technically I, the oldest yeah. out of all of us, yeah. but he's, you know, he's another one of the boys. Yeah. Um, he his favorite band's Colony House, like, and funnily enough, like my kind of thing with the band ended up inadvertently being like finding an artist that I liked that was a favorite of one of the other members of the band because oh, then nice. we have something to connect over more than just like, hey, we're all playing this, you know, whatever. Yeah. And so Johnny and I, I like the first time I hung out with him was for another recording project uh, for a friend of ours and <laughs> I was like this dude's uh, ridiculous he uh, he's so good and like is the coolest <laughs> dude to hang around and then um, we were t- we got to talking at one point he was like yeah calling house I was like hold on like that's like one of my favorite bands ever he was like dude my cousin's their sound guy or something like that oh, like wow. crazy you know <laughs> so Johnny like Johnny will tell you something about or like knows something about music that you will have never thought about. Yeah. And he guarantee like he's probably heard it. Um, Cause like he grew up in a super at the time, like went back when non-denom was like the new thing in the yeah. late nineties, early two thousands. So his church, like when mine was playing trading my sorrows, his was playing like the brand new, like passion. Blonde <laughs> rock. Yeah. Stuff, Tom yeah. Was just getting started. So like in the Christian world, he knows so 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 much. Yeah, he's, he's a genius. Oh wow, that's fantastic. <laughs> and he, all of you, all of you do so well at spreading the word. Um, but like, like like I always like to say, uh, there are we we ha- actually hold on. I don't we don't remember where this specifically came from, but. When Bryce and I were last talking, we came up with the concept of coffee art orders in churches. Now, yeah. Bryson will tell you that it came up because of, you're talking about coffee houses showing up in churches. But then yeah. I thought, it works yeah. for what we're talking about. It does. Like, what's your coffee order? I'm so, I'm so bad, dude. I don't, like, I, I am not a bean juice guy. No? And I, I wish I was. Bean juice. <laughs> yeah, because... I like I survived. Like bushes, like <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> now that stuff. <laughs> Break me open a He's can. Like, oh, of Bryce, bushes. Is, Bryce has got a can of that bean. I do, I do. You better watch man. out. Yeah. Uh, you know what happens when he's, <laughs> when he's hitting up on that bean juice? You get me some of them baked beans. Ain't mine. Ain't mine. <laughs> uh, with them little pork chops in there. <laughs> uh, but so I tried funny. coffee. I it is gross. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> I tried coffee. I really did. I earnestly tried while I was in yeah. college. And I just, I'm not a huge bitter fan. Mm. So uh, I'm like, I'm I, like, I know I already probably look it, but I'm like an 18 year old white girl in terms of what I drink. <laughs> so if I go to a Starbucks, I'm basically getting a vanilla milkshake. And then <laughs> at, at most, I've had, um, there was a friend of mine who runs a coffee company who's like the nicest guy ever. (laughs) He was like trying so hard to get me to drink something with coffee in it. And I was like, okay, like what's the lightest amount of coffee that you can put in it? So he put like a quarter of a shot of espresso. So like, you know, the tiniest bit in in an already full thing of like a vanilla frat. Yeah. And I was like, I can do this. So then the next day I come back and someone else is working and I tell them what he did and they go, oh, okay, go. And they put a whole shot of his No! And I was like able to do a sip and I was like, this is not, not the thing. my jam. So I gave it to my lovely mother who then was like, this is delicious. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> so 
my my bad habit is that I I do way too much like soda. Oh. Okay. And, and and then if I get coffee, I it's it's ice and like tons of vanilla and sweetener and cream <laughs> and milk, uh, and it's so bad for me. It's still considered <laughs> a coffee in some parts of the world. <laughs> yeah, I I'm spat upon by the actual coffee drinker <laughs> and uh, and then casual coffee drinkers like myself or people that are as white as I am, they're like, yes, we agree. That's the way. <laughs> Can you turn him up? In my oh, yeah. Do you drink coffee, more? Grayson? Uh, very rare. I drink coffee socially. Um, mm, yeah. I had a rule whenever I went to went to college that I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna drink a cup of coffee. That okay. changed really quick. <laughs> I, I turned it into I'm not gonna pay for a cup of coffee, uh, and that's yeah. and that's not because because I'm like a stingy turd. It was really just because I didn't <laughs> want to spend what little money I had in college yes. all on coffee. Um, but inadvertently, a lot of the and I'm, I've never been much of a ladies' man by any means, but but uh, okay. most of, most of the individuals that have that I've dated over the years have all been caffeine fiends. So so I, I learned kind of secondhand uh, on that end. But I'm uh, maybe I'm that's a, why I've been single for so long. Is like I can't even bother with coffee. I'm just like I'm just like, do you drink Coke? Do you, do you, do you like Coca Cola? You know, like the number one syndicated yeah. drink in the country. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Um, we, should, we should go out for coke sometime. Yeah. Why don't we go out yeah. for a night? That has like, a totally different connotation. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I do make a mean coke flow, so I probably should have Yeah, dude, that could go either that. way. You, yeah. could, you could end up in some trouble. Yeah. I own, a, it's like I, I now own a private coffee shop that's actually just an ice cream bar. Yeah. <laughs> we just, yeah. We yeah. just make coke floats, man. It's the vibe. There it is. Uh, I don't, I know nothing about coffee and one of my best friends is, is uh val is a coffee oh, yeah. connoisseur he like grounds his own beans that recycled or cycled through three beavers in montenegro yeah. and you know i had those yeah he's he's a, he's he, yeah. yeah he's a connoisseur a nice, i'm a i am a uh, burn. i am a uh a, a caramel caramel ribbon crunch <laughs> starbucks <laughs> man myself yeah it, it needs okay. to look like a freaking Christmas tree. So we apologize in advance for the the topic that you thought was going to oh, be great. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is no, this is perfect. This is perfect because I myself, I am that beaver coffee guy. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> but um, I make, tell us how dumb we are. I make mine in a Vietnamese <laughs> fin. A what? A, a Vietnamese, Vietnamese fin. Fin. Uh, fin. P H I N. Okay. Okay. So basically, it's a little saucer, right? Then it's All got right. a cup that sits on top of it. The saucer mm -hmm. has holes in it, the cup has holes in it, and then there's a part that goes on top that that presses down the coffee, right? Okay. So it, it yeah. just sit, it just sits on it. It just sits gotcha. on it. But you press and that it down. sits in so, sits in something that doesn't have holes in it. Uh, yeah, and that right. that's <laughs> that's on top of the thing with the holes in it. And then there's a cup. All yeah. that sits on a mug. Gonna go, gonna go. Yes, yeah. go. All that goes onto a cup, right? Right. Uh, or a mug. And then you pour the coffee in, and the filter is basically the coffee itself. Okay. And it's actually really smooth. It's not bitter. The only time you get bitter is when you over brew coffee. Okay. So. See, that's and, that's and does so that advanced. Mean you just leave it in the <laughs> oven a little too long. Oh no. no. Sure. <laughs> I mean, no. Uh, yeah. Oh, you gotta just pour the hot water in. It sits there, and then that's, three, that three sounds... minutes later, you have your coffee. That's that actually sounds better than like oh, my my dad i i have like ptsd from waking up on sunday morning sometimes like way too early for yeah. me uh from where he would grind beans yeah sometimes. i would wake up i didn't know yeah, and it was I'd like it sounds like, like a this, chainsaw this, coming it's from it's the like kitchen. The, yes it's, it's the like, most bro, aggressive thing on the planet it is i have like, one 15 in the morning do you remember do you remember and those like automatic pencil sharpeners yeah like streamlined and they yeah. were the loudest thing on the planet it was like yeah. that except them it, old long block ones yeah 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 but except it also made a, what i thought was a horrible smell from the <laughs> downstairs area of our house so i'd like wake up and i'm like what is that and then they'd be like we made cinnamon rolls to combat the coffee yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's uh, awesome sauce listen lem i challenge you with this yeah when we come when we come to wisconsin yeah if you can find a drink that I like that is co that is coffee related. I yes. will I will pay for it, 
uh, whatever, however expensive it is, <laughs> I will like, pay you back for I'll it. I'll pay the two ninety five. I'll pay. The, no, no, no. Listen, no, 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 no. You don't. You don't I understand. Tried. You don't understand. I used to be a. I used to be a barista. <laughs> oh. Oh dang. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I, I, I've, we're, I've we're gonna go in stages with this. I will bring the stuff to make you oh, coffee. God. Oh, dude. That sounds awesome. That yeah, would be I, glorious. Listen, I'm not We're trying to, like, challenge Thursday you night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll be in on Thursday night, and we'll be there all day Friday. So, okay. All right. <laughs> Absolutely. You come will. by the G3 lair. I will have a camper. I am making you coffee. We are finding your drink. <laughs> I'll just tell you now, like, I was always warned growing up, my drink's going to be Dolly Parton Blonde. <laughs> so, like, whatever you, whatever you think is too sweet, probably take it another level, and then you might find the sweet spot. <laughs> we'll leave. Okay, we're, we're going to talk about what you can and cannot have. <laughs> oh, well, don't worry about, like, allergies or anything. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. in that regard. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Oh, my gosh. So, the, you heard it here for, first, folks. We are going to... We've got the Bryson Coffee Challenge. Send we'll me a, ins- what yeah, we should we'll have, do. Oh, God. Send we'll me what a, we should do. We'll have an Instagram Live while we're doing it. As uh, a live taste test. Yes. Oh, All right. I can catch you like a rodent to pass the beans through. <laughs> yeah, you can get the beaver. I can, I can procure the, the beaver the, to the run the all the beans through. For the, oh, the varmint. We'll get it from the farm. It'll be, it'll just, be a full circle thing. I just, just had I, a Yosemite Sam moment. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, just, just think uh, my beard is not quite Yosemite Sam. Just, just. That was how I got away with saying naughty words as a kid. I was just like, I'm Yosemite Sam. That's probably what I was trying to do. <laughs> but all right, so we we just we, we just talked about this where you know we've got the we got I don't drink coffee to oh my gosh, I barista. Mm-hmm. In our walk with christ we have folks that are oh my gosh nothing to i can recite everything and tell you all the greek everything about it all right how do we as a christian community as followers of christ how do we work together because there's so many times that we work against each other each other yeah how you know how would we work together with this question yeah that is that is a good question i mean i think and this is this is not to be corny or just um this isn't meant to be just like an easy answer right um but but for me and in in everything I, i i really gauge is is i look at christ um and and you look at the you know the people who put him up on the cross were fluent mm. on the um the law and all that. On, yeah on on and not not necessarily legalism from the standard of legalism right um but they but they were the you know the greek and hebrew scholars on that end and you have a you know a great number of individuals who who you know write books in the bible who are more or less uneducated fishermen Mm. Now, that's not to advocate for not wanting to grow right. and to be deeper because because I think it's it's very easy to look at it that way and write off the 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 deeper theological aspects of what's going on. Um, and there has to be there has to be a balance between the two. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's I think just just in like the the society that we live in is is very hard to have a, a, a disagreeable conversation and it end positively. Yes, yes. Um and, and I think we absolutely have to have to get better at that. I mean mm-hmm. that's that yeah. how are you going to continue as you know, a house about it cannot stand and that's not that's not a, a a political argument so much as it is even in the church itself. Right. Yeah. Like how are you going to you know, how are you going to to function and I think what it comes down to is I'm an actor I'm a front man right alongside Bryson and the biggest thing is knowing your audience Mm. I am not going to play Dave Matthews at 
like my high school reunion. Yeah. Going to play George Strait. Yeah. But we're not going to play George Strait uh, at Life Fest. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, right. and, and I think in, in the same way, you know, you're going to have, uh, um, you know, you know, churches and, and, and congregations and not so much from like your, your, your corporate, you know, conventional setup. Um, but you need to know the, you know, the, uh, the, the congregation. Uh, I, I can't remember. Um, there was a theologian. Um, he, he, his, uh, one of his key contributions was this thing called, uh, um, oh, I, I, it, 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 I'm trying to think of the exact words. Um, it, we'll say water buffalo theology and okay. and essentially what it was is i believe he was a missionary um to one of the smaller countries in in the far east um and he realized that the only thing that this particular community that he was in really understood how to do well is farm water buffaloes and use water okay. buffaloes in, in yeah. everyday life. That was that was how they operated. That was what their community thrived on. Right. Um, and so he figured out that the only way to reach them was to figure out how to <laughs> take the word and apply it to water buffalo farming, mm. it, it, if that makes sense. At, at 1,000, trust. If anybody understands taking something that is very niche and applying the word to that yeah it's the god games and geekery community <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and, and that's the thing so uh, even like in our in our music um we've all grown up for sure i say grown up played for probably the past six years camp circuits you know as, as far as yeah. church camps really regularly um which is our thing to schedule around when you've got everything else going on um but one of the things that, that i really tried to do is yes, you're gonna have your pastor's kids that are there that are going to know, they're gonna call you on everything. You have yeah. to have all your stuff right. Yeah. Um, but then there's also gonna be the kids there that their grandma made them go and their home life sucks and they don't wanna be there any yes. more than you wanna have to be dealing with all the craziness that's going on. Yes. And so even like in some of our sets, um, you know, we would do like alive hillsong young and free everybody yeah. does alive that's the standard or, or you know at least it was two three years ago yeah but the intros and the breaks would be smooth criminal bum bum ba da bum dunk yeah. dunk 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 and that's if cool. nothing else it would it would perk the ears of the kids there that you know wouldn't normally be paying attention yeah now are you going to get blessed out by one of the pastors there for it maybe yeah. <laughs> and, and and that's the thing is so you you have yeah. to be able to you know, not not justify something just for the sake of justifying it, because I think that's that's probably uh, more of a problem than not just yeah. across the board is, yeah. you know, in that grand scheme of Greek and Hebrew and, you know, uh, I'm, I'm country boy theology, <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's very, it, you know, it's yeah. very easy to justify whatever way you want to live. Yeah. Um, and and I think when it comes down to it, and I know I rambled a lot there, um, you as the individual have to know who you're ministering to. Yeah. But but also you have to know what you're doing too, and that can't be compromised by the group of individuals that you're ministering to. Mm. You know. Yes. Um, yes. Because it it doesn't mean that the country boy the you know group over here. I just say that because that's what I grew up in. Yeah. That doesn't mean that they don't need the Greek and Hebrew, right? Right. But also, that doesn't mean that the that the Greek and Hebrew doesn't need to pull their head out of their area and get some practicality to it. That, <laughs> yes, the, that the water buffalo the, water buffalo theology. Yes, can bring sir. Right? Yeah. Um, because I go to seminary, and I'm I'm really you know, I'm really really proud of you know the education I've gotten there because it is very practical. For the right. love of God, please do not give me something that. None of us will know the answer to until we get up there, number one, and waste my time. <laughs> and but but also, how do I take this and apply it to my life? Because if I can't, or if I don't know how to, or if it's not presented in a way that I can understand, then how is it supposed to change the way I, you know, yeah. live, move, and breathe? Yeah, yeah, sure. And I think it's interesting too, like 
the I feel like you know I I'm a I would say like in some things I'm an intellectual person like I like to use my brain and uh, I think I'm intellectual when it comes to Tolkien. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he, he does know a lot about that, and I know nothing. And he loves telling me things, and I'm like, uh huh, yeah, that's a yep, mm -hmm. sure, yeah. The 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 Hobbits is. Uh, <laughs> I've only, yeah, in, con in confession, I've only seen the first Lord of the Rings. <laughs> and he's made it his personal mission to make yeah, me watch my, I have been dead uh, all of them. Uh, yeah, we, and I uh, want to. We'll I, will, I, I will set aside some time we uh, can. in July we can. for us we to can. do that. that to, at great. least one. At least one. Yeah. I would love that. I would love, I genuinely, I would love that. We actually talked about it since watch we're it, we, watching it on the way up. Since we're driving it's a, up, it's yeah. a nine-hour drive, so we could knock out. We could knock out a good. two two extended cuts. Yes, <laughs> and stop for gas. And stop for gas once. <laughs> Continue though. I'm sorry. Uh, no, you're I'm good. Sorry. No, you're good. Uh, I, like I think that sometimes I'm intellectual about like things, but when it comes to faith and stuff, I've always just kind of been um, like I, I was. You know, I feel like it's really easy. For people to throw the book at people literally yeah. and be like you know well this, everything you need to know is in here read it and it's like okay well for someone that's never like that wasn't raised in sunday school yes it doesn't you know know all that how do you make it um like stomachable i don't know if that's the right word yeah. but like like feasible to um to consume especially when they're learning about it for the first time um and i mean gosh if i was like like, like, like if I was 20 and it was the first time I'd ever been in a church and someone was telling me about a guy that got eaten by a fish and I'm like, what? What? <laughs> and you're like, oh yeah, he got eaten by the fish because he was doing what he wasn't told. And you're like, what? Why? And then, <laughs> like, I, I feel like it'd be really easy for people to get, like, a really bad view of things religious. Yeah. Um, and so I, I say that to say, um, at least in my life, um, I've tried to be careful, really careful about my when I talk about my faith at least when it comes to like a, a crowd or things like that because yeah. like I do music on my own as well as part of bands and things like that and I don't I don't ever like hide it it's not like I'm you know a closeted Christian or anything but I've never felt the need to like shove it down someone's throat yeah. like yes. you know, because I grew up in a culture and like have seen the culture of the what we like to call the Bible thumping Baptist and and I think that there is definitely a time and place for telling people the truth and like and letting them know what's like right and wrong, but doing it in a way that is also communicating Christ's love and like grace and stuff because I think it's just as important to tell them that they're like I <laughs> I'm looking at it right now. There's a poster right behind my laptop uh, that you can't see obviously. That's um this Mr. Rogers. Yeah. And I like to like. I like to use him as a golden example of many things. Uh, the best acceptance speech for an award on the planet uh, was his Lifetime Achievement Award. And I cry every time I watch it. Uh, but like Mr. Rogers was the perfect example of like love and compassion for everybody always while yes. also telling you what was right and wrong. And gosh, if we could have someone like yeah. him right about now. Oh, right? I mean, oh. I mean, just like, Please. and I'm not trying to sound like ancient, you know, by saying that or like, you know, all like the world was better and whatever, yeah. but like it, he genuinely was like the epitome of everyone loves him always. And there's yes. no one that would ever question his character or anything like that. And I like when I think about being in my like 60s and like, you know, if we ever get lucky enough to go however far our dreams go yeah, and, and I'm sitting there on stage with you know my best friends around me or whatever and they're like hey this is an award that you got i want to be able to be like him and go you know i'm grateful for it but like remember the people that are there for you and that have brought like uh, uh, so for context if you're listening to this and you haven't ever seen it i believe it's his lifetime achievement award for like a, in work in television and basically what he does is he ought he just complete he says thank you to like the academy and the people that worked on his television program his wife his family and then he said uh basically I'm, I'm paraphrasing but essentially he was like isn't it so amazing that we've all ended up here today so i'm why don't we take one minute and just think about the people that are the reason that you're here today 
and he sits there and he just looks at his watch and watches the time and there's people bawling in the room yeah and then he said whoever you thought about how pleased they must be to know that they made an impact in your life and i think about like that in come the on terms. fred i know man uh, <laughs> and they're like god ah, and he's are like, we sure adorable. that fred did not write all of pixar's movies <laughs> that's, a great, that's a great question but but I, I think about that like in christian terms in the sense that like man i think about like it's you talk about like the the, the picture of jesus and, and the love and the, the compassion that he showed for everybody around him and 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 mr rogers you know was an open christian person as well but um i think about his character in terms of like being a christian and i i want to like through my life and music or whatever I end up doing to be able to be like yeah he was a good guy and he cared for a lot of people and like all that and using that as well in like Christian love and saying you know, like, I love you and you know I love you but you know, God loves you too and uh, and trying to like navigate that sphere of things mm-hmm. um, especially in an entertainment world is, is a really daunting past sometimes because I think we live in a world now where everything is so instantaneous and um, it's almost encouraging outrage and the like uh, uh, the, the things that people don't like to talk about or will all, almost automatically cause conflict yeah and especially in the church yeah um, and so I think like it's our job is people in the entertainment world and i say that as if we have any sort of sphere of influence but you know it's our job at least two people that are listening to this right now right exactly (laughs) uh but but even like for the two people you know like the the philosophy that i have in my music as well is like if i give you one moment of solace where you forget about what you like when i was in college it was what exams going on next week or uh you know like my girlfriend just broke up with me or whatever it is you know Mm. if i can give you that moment of solace and feel loved and welcome and a part of something for an hour and a half or two hours or however long we have then i'll have done my job yes and i don't always communicate that but that's what i want it to be and so i think about that in terms of like uh, 99 percent of my money comes from gigging in churches and it's fill-in work a lot of the time. So I'm not there day to day. I'm not there week to week. That congregation doesn't know me from Adam and I'm okay with that. But I want my job to be, yes, play the notes right. Yes, know your music, all this other stuff, be a good person fundamentally. But at top of that, be someone that can show Christ's love and and um, give them a rest, a respite, just from like, gosh, it's hard day to day. It's, it's sometimes so stressful and we know better than anybody because we're in our mid twenties trying to make a living <laughs> and music. <laughs> so like we, we understand, I sleep on couches at least like a few nights a month and mm. it's, it's, I mean, I love it, but yeah. I, I get it. It's hard. And, and all of that very drawn out thing to say, like, it's so important that we acknowledge each other's strengths and beauty as much as mm. we do the issue and and there are issues and it, there are things that need to be talked about obviously but showing that love just as much and and being able to at least in our musical sphere be able to go okay well we're going to be singing about a lot of things and like some of them are going to be super fun and we're going to be laughing and having a great time and then some of them we're going to be crying just as much as you are mm. and it's it's all beautiful and worth it and it's another way of reflecting what we believe which is christ's love and what he did for us and things like that um yeah. i don't know that was a lot of things no that's that, that's good. Good. that's point, fantastic but... both of you guys uh the and what i see with all of that is right now if we're looking at how if we're bringing this gift of uh, uh, one of the a drink carrier let's go back to the coffee metaphor right yeah. a drink carrier <laughs> uh we three have our coffee or lack thereof um and right. we're bringing all of that to that person that does not have that fourth spot they don't have their cup yet they don't know what they want but we're bringing this to them and say hey 
it's all coffee. Yeah. Which one can we get more of for you later? Yeah. So I, that's that's beautiful. I love it. I absolutely love it. Guys, where can people find you? If somebody is like, I want to hear more from them. I want to follow them on socials. I want to see all the videos. I want to I want to follow them on Instagram. Um, what like where can they find you? Yeah. So right now we're we're prepping an album. I was uh, it, it's funny. I charted uh, the first six songs last night sitting here with with uh with bryce and working outs and stuff which is really crazy to me because i never uh i never wanted to play originals yeah. at all because i i didn't think i could do it and have a good time doing it and and really i i was i didn't think people would enjoy it you know as much as they would enjoy us playing covers yeah you know? and, and that and that's not out of uh you know a, a fear of any of the other guys ability or inability so much as my own you know insecurity in in writing things um and kind of got over it (laughs) uh got it got it got over it about a year ago and um yeah growth is important (laughs) and um ended up writing a song called turned out good um which we'll put on there will probably end up being a single um we ended up playing at life fest and i want to say that one landed in my lap the week before we played Life Fest. Oh, wow. Um, and it, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it was it was a really quick turnaround. Um, it ended up being how we ended up getting hooked up with Life Fest because we had played uh, a number of gigs um, over at the at the venue, so at, yeah. at Johnny Cash's farm, that was that was all very much Kenny Chesney, Leonard Skinner, Chris Stapleton, yeah, uh, um, on, on the country side of things. Um, and uh, I had the song kind of hit me, and I sent it to Brian, who who runs the farm. He's like, "Oh, are you playing that at Life Fest this week or next week? This is on a. I think I sent it to him on a Thursday, and Life Fest was the next Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, "Oh, are you playing this at Life Fest?" And I was like, "Uh, are we playing? Life are we Fest? playing?" I, I, he, I was like, "You yeah. know, are we?" And he's like, "Oh, well, I thought you were." And I was like, I don't think so, but I'd love to. And he's like, well, you'd want to be on the main stage, though, wouldn't you? I, like, I ain't going to turn it down. Yeah, exactly, so, right? <laughs> uh, so it, it ended up that um, one of the one of the crews ended up backing out, and so we got plugged in. And then we ended up doing three other – played, played uh, three the, uh, three sets there. Yeah. Um, and then we'll, we'll play three on the, um, the Friday, July the 7th set. Um, but – said all that to say we're working on it uh yeah. as far as the music stuff's concerned bryson's uh, has a ton of his own stuff that's really 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 solid um so does johnny um and that's really one of the one of the really really cool things um about the whole crew is not only are we you know working collectively together yeah you know to you know for this idea of, of you know what the breaks is gonna be um but also they're just really, really passionate in their own areas. And the stuff that Bryson's doing is way, 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 way different and really, really good. <laughs> and I'm jealous of, <laughs> of in comparison to the stuff that, you know, I'm writing and, and I'm yeah. working on. And it's the same way for the stuff that Johnny's writing, working on. And, and really um, we've kind of figured out um, that some, some really cool stuff can happen when we, when we manage to marry all that up. Um, so keep an eye out yeah. for for hopefully oh I say hopefully we're we're gonna be going to the studio, cutting it um in in the summer yeah okay uh, we we've got uh the breaks official which is like the band's official handle yeah B R E A K S yes. so like you break like, like you're breaking break yeah. something not like the car yeah yeah uh yeah. he's uh, I think Grayson at Grayson Russell at Grayson C Russell. at Grayson C Russell yeah my uh, middle name's Claude somebody had Grayson Russell never I made that account yeah. Yeah. Then we really <laughs> you hate really to see it. bought the farm bought into Grayson C so I kind of snuck with it from <laughs> Got a, let's go. Uh, he's yeah. so he's Grayson C Russell on pretty much everything. Um, my handle kind of depends on the the platform sometimes. Yeah. A lot of times it's just Bryson or Bryson Maggard or uh, a lot of times it's Bryson two six four. So I'm I'm out there. Um, and and then um, come see us at Life Fest. Yeah. E- exactly. Uh, if you are able to, those of yeah. you who are listening from Australia, I understand. But if you can make it. Yeah. Buy a ticket today. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and Drew, we, I'm talking to you. 
You know who you are. Drew, come yeah, on, Drew. Drew, listen. listen get with the program. Listen, bro. I'm begging you. <laughs> come see us. I mean, we're going to need all the help we can get yeah. for a crowd at yeah. this time. <laughs> Uh, but we'll be at Life Fest. And honestly, like, if people are listening to this and you, I, it would make my day if someone came to Life Fest and was like, hey, did you guys, were you guys like on the podcast or something? That would be, that would be so dope. That would be awesome. I would love it. Oh, my, you know I what? Would, oh, we need to talk. You know what? I think we need to do. We need to talk about um, getting you guys at the G3 lair and doing some gaming or something. Oh, that'd be oh, sweet. that'd be so fun. That'd I, be sweet. That'd be so awesome. I mean, I oh, I forgot to tell you. Okay, so Lem, you're gonna be so proud of me. I finally, uh, I was hanging out with one of my other friends, uh, a different Caleb, <laughs> uh, in Cleveland, and I was hanging out at his apartment, and he was he just like pulled up Fortnite, and he, he was like, he was like, dude, have you ever played it? And I was like, dude, I've never actually. You did. Never actually, did I almost called Fortnite? you when I did. No, I never Bro! played it before. Yeah, yeah. And I finally played a round of Fortnite, and I died almost immediately. Oh, exactly. But, uh, that's 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 one thousand. Especially if but, you're playing on his account and he's played before. Yeah, that that. Happens. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I was set up in terms of like I looked awesome, but uh, <laughs> but Dude, my I'm awesome. A, I was a bush wookie whenever I played Fortnite. Oh dude. yeah, but my, oh. that bush. Oh yeah, uh, I it was like right <laughs> after. Oh, so it was right after the like uh, goo thing that you could turn into. Oh yeah, yeah, the happened. chrome, the chrome guy, yeah. Yes. So that was right around that time, and I was like, "That's so cool. What is this?" And then I died. Oh, it, um, oh. So, okay. But I did. I did finally buy in and try it. And then um, a buddy of mine's bachelor party. Which <laughs> you're like, you have images of what you do at bachelor parties, and it's like. This Fortnite does, ain't the, it. Yeah, and it's Fortnite. And that's yep. what they wanted that, to do. And that, I was like, yo, you know what? that's my type. <laughs> I was like, you know what? This is this is what's happening today. Okay. This is what's, this is. <laughs> I'm going to throw this out there. All right, I'm listening. You let me know when we will do Fortnite with you guys and any of the, any, any of the other guys in the band that want to do it. I will set Dude. I'm a, I'm an epic ambassador, so I get, I can make private lobbies for up to a hundred people. Dude, that sounds insane. Uh, and I'd be, I'd be we down. get in and we're all in comms and just like okay. going up 1v1v1v however many and we'll get some students yeah. in there and that we'll all go. Like absolutely. I, I was never so I, I'm more of a war zone guy. Oh, okay, you know, yeah. I'll do it. I'll do, Now, I will say the only thing I can brag about mm. is I have a crew. It's all my buddies from home and one girl named Emily Duty from Maryland. And we play Warzone like at least twice a week since COVID. You still do. And at one point we were top four percent in the world. Shut like, up! Warzone. Apparently. Oh, I, they're, they're bringing I, first person to Fortnite. So. Oh, I could do that. Yeah, I, I played Fortnite. The last time I really played it was like season three, and Thanos was in it jumping around. Yeah. That's the last time I played it. But also that's when like everybody really took off building. And I, I, I threw my hands up. We played yeah, no I was build. I was going to say, I, I had to play no build. I could yeah. not. Yeah. I watched. Which I guess that was before that was an option. Yeah. 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 I yeah. Think that was like that once that occurred, four, I was three, like, four oh, seasons ago that it up. just turned. Yeah. I, I was like very nervous. And I, and then my, my friend reassured me. He was like, no, 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 I do no build. I don't do that build stuff. That's dumb. I was like, okay. Here's the thing. Fortnite's the, like original selling point is now the dumb thing. Uh, the, <laughs> build, the build kids can't shoot. So that's why I go into builds. <laughs> my biggest regret playing Fortnite. I placed second, and I placed second because the dude flew in. I saw him come and landed, and I missed him. Oh. My regret was I had a boogie bomb back when boogie bomb. Yes. Was, and I had my big purple LMG up. It's like I'm about to gas this Joker, and I don't know what I did, but I obviously didn't do that. <laughs> After that, I was like, dude, I had a boogie bomb. I could have just went like. I will say, uh, 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 I, I know this is a Christian podcast, so we're going to go into confession mode. I, <laughs> I really, really, really enjoy sometimes watching those kids on Fortnite just get like destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> students, <laughs> like students. Um, I think you are very, very aware that this is what I do. Yeah, Live. I literally <laughs> every week. I literally, it's I my, one say, of my favorites. This one is, time on Grand Theft Auto. Uh, well, I mean that too, I guess. But I, I remember, uh, I remember, I was like doom doom scrolling through some social media. As yeah, you do. doom scrolling. And I, it was this kid who got like trapped in his own box, 
and they just kept throwing boogie bombs and he, he's like slowly melting <laughs> yes, and, like, in, oh in the store oh my god and he starts he starts crying and like oh, screaming no. stop it and i'm like i shouldn't be i was i was crying from laughing so hard oh no because no. this now kid score. five minutes before was like talking so much trash and all yes. this other stuff and then he gets trapped and i was like this is this is why capture was invented like this is why elgato is yes. the best thing ever because yes. like it was it was the thing of beauty and then i felt bad afterwards so oh, yeah. you know i'm not a horrible person probably maybe but well, we're uh, uh lim did you ever know mountain drew you familiar with mountain drew he was yeah. one of the first like um i know the name modern warfare youtubers He's yeah i know the name he would. He was the one who like pioneered the 360 no scope. Oh know? yeah, that's okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why I know his name. That was that was his thing. That's Ab Abby's boyfriend. <laughs> True. He's the man. That's <laughs> actually him. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. He's a legend. I know I didn't like um, him. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, I love. It. Does Fortnite have the proximity chat where you can where you can hear him I don't coming? Know. Because uh, dude, yes that and is no. something else on Warzone. Dude. Yeah. That'll. Mm -hmm. That'll get you going. Is that a thing? Is that a thing in Fortnite? Uh, a little bit. Uh, you can kind of hear. It's not like it's in Overwatch, which is another one I love. Got um, it. Yeah. But you can hear it a l way better in Overwatch. But you can kind of yeah. hear it in uh, in Fortnite as well. Dude, I love proximity chat. I think it's I think it's hilarious. Yeah, I think uh, it's awesome. Like, uh, what was it called? Sea of Thieves. Yeah. Like when you like, <laughs> there was some guys who were like all in one voice you call. Sea of, sea of Thieves. I did it a couple I times. I wanted to play Sea of Thieves, but that's only on Xbox. Isn't it? Uh, uh I, I did it on Steam. Yeah, I did it on Steam gotcha, at gotcha. the time. But I, I loved like you're like floating by and you just hear like go go go, go we're gonna go <laughs> and everyone else is on a voice chat so we can hear everybody. Yeah. And oh it was so good. That like these kids think that they're being so stealthy, but they don't have like a Discord call or something. And yeah. so they're they're just talking out loud. So they're like, I'm gonna board the ship and you're like, they're gonna board us. <laughs> <laughs> we did we're we're like Archaic. Oh my gosh, we just we just throw it on a FaceTime. Yeah, we just oh, that too. Yeah, up. yeah. Sit there and talk. Or the last the last time I played Overwatch, I had a, a Facebook Messenger call that was. Oh on my gosh. On my lap, like I had my phone sitting on my lap and my controller in oh. my hands, and I'm like, guys, Bro, like what's going on? You're and, talking about a ghetto rig. Man. Yeah. yeah. So okay. Right there. All right. We, we, we we're out, doing this. We we're doing this. Facebook. It's gonna be us game. We're we're doing some gaming. We'll figure it out. Uh, we'll, but we'll have you guys, to. thank you for being here. This has been so fun. Of course, it's and so good to see you again, man. Yeah, not Honestly, the last really time is. this is happening. Of course, yeah. not. not at of all. Of course not. And right. if nothing else, we'll actually get to see each other in person. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, in July. Very soon. Very soon. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks, guys. We'll talk to you later. Thank of you. Of course, man. Thank, thank you, Mr. So Lamb. Take care. Bryson, Grayson, my good. Thank you. Guys, we got like gaming. We got geekery. We got Fred Rogers quotes. Ah, thank you guys so much for being here. That was amazing. You know, the Bible says in James chapter two, verses one to 26. It's a little bit of a long one, but hey, check this out. My brothers show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in, and if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, you sit here in a good place, while you say to the poor man, you stand over there or sit down at my feet, have you not then made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom? Which has he promised to those who loved him? Guys, we talked today about diversity in our faith. And, 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 and those that are maybe musicians or Bible scholars or gamers. or We all love Jesus. And we need to recognize and... And, 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 and just remember, recognize, and build each other up in the stations that we are in 
to bring Jesus to the world. I might like my coffee straight up black, maybe a sugar, maybe one. And then you've got Grayson who maybe doesn't even like a shot of coffee in his coffee. But that doesn't mean that we don't love hanging out and talking Jesus together. Or maybe even talking to you about it. So if you're playing Minecraft or or, or Rocket League and you're like, ooh, I don't like Minecraft. Ooh, or ooh, I don't like Rocket League. That doesn't mean that we can't sit together and use those mediums to talk about Jesus. It doesn't mean that we can't take the time to sit with our brothers that love uh, Fortnite and get to know them over that. Guys, the diversity that we have in our community is amazing. Not just the God Games and Geekery community, but the community of Christ. So this month, while I want us to remember, while we might have different ways of praising Jesus, it's all praise to Jesus. <sighs> hey, remember, you can find us on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram as God Games Geekery and on Twitch as God Games and Geekery, make sure you spell out the whole thing, even the and. Um, if you want to contact me, I'm badgamer at lifepromotions.org. That's badgamer at lifepromotions.org. If you can rate and review, please do the thing. Please do it. Let us know. It's been a little bit since we've had our last review, I know, on Apple, uh, Apple Podcasts. So uh, maybe if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, you say, hey... Here's your review. That's right. Hey, thank you for being here. Remember, you are geeky and you are loved. And make sure you leave people better than you found them.